we're back at the PDAC 2019. I'm happy to have another guest with us, Mr. Garrett Gorgon of the Gold Stock Analyst. Garrett, thanks a lot for being on the Thank segment. Thank you, Sonny. Thanks for having me. So, let's talk mining, okay? So where it. are we at in the mining sector today? You know, with all the volatility that we've seen, you know, it's just been absolutely crazy. So, what's your take? Yeah. You know, there's a couple ways you can look at it. Um, there's been a lot of uh, mega mergers yeah. that have happened within the industry. Absolutely. Um, and what's happened since 2011 is that in 2011, the large cap miners were chasing production. They weren't right. chasing profits. They were just chasing straight outs and they were trying to increase their production from three mil to four mil to five mil at the expense of profitability. Interesting, yeah. Gold traded down. Um, so therefore, and you know, at that they time started the gold price money. was yeah, it's, around eighteen hundred or whatever. Yeah, okay. So, and they sorry. were chasing yeah. it, expending a yeah. lot of money in capex, yeah. and then they got caught at the top. Right. So they had a lot of debt. They've been paring back debt. Uh, Bar like Barrick, for example, um, had I think eighteen billion dollars worth of debt. Right. They yeah. pared it back down, back down to twelve bill. But what, the way they did that is they cut back on capex, they cut back on spending, and they cut back on production. So all these big majors have production. Um, cliffs their right. their production is declining over the next yep. few years now they need production profitable production hopefully they learn the lesson profitable production yep. this time so they're gonna they're at the stage now where they've improved their balance sheets um, now they're facing the production cliff so they're gonna be looking outside the company for acquisition opportunities to to add productive ounce uh, profitable ounces right. so what uh, you know what what draws you about uh, about silver itself you know you've been kind of bullish on that uh, for, for quite a while yeah. now what why do you like it yeah. What are some aspects yeah, yeah. Uh, that make it fundamentally make sense for you right. as, as a metal to invest in? Well, you know, or gold in the sector, anyways. Yeah, so. gold is interesting, right? Because it's got no real use um, right. other than investment. So yeah. all the amount of gold is basically sits on top of the surface, and it's not productive. Silver is a productive metal, yeah. um, and you know, one of the major sectors that has done extremely well over the past few years is technology, right? And there's been a major trend with Tesla to uh, towards electronic. Uh, electric vehicles um, and there's also a major trend towards um, renewable power solar Correct. Yeah. silver is used uh, to make these batteries for the EVs and it's used in solar as a cut coating for um, the solar panels right. so silver has a productive use um, so you know the silver gets mined in a large Major, a large percentage of it gets used for industrial purposes. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like it, because you have actual demand that's increasing that is supporting prices right. that hopefully will drive prices higher. Right, so what, uh, I mean, so in terms of where you're investing your money in the sector, when you look at companies overall across all metals with, with your picks, um, what are some things that shout out at you in terms of you know jurisdiction, uh, management. What is some specific things that you look at? I mean, actually, I want to touch on. Uh, we'll touch on this uh, after. Uh, is, is your spreadsheet? I've seen some of your spreadsheets that you yeah. talk about these comparables. Yeah. Very in depth. Very very interesting. We can draw some conclusions on that. But let's talk about what are some things you look for in, in, in when investing in these juniors. Um, you know, the silver industry. <laughs> it, it interests me because number one. Silver is more volatile than gold. When gold does well, silver does well. Silver is gold on steroids. And then you add in like a miner on top of that, that's mm -hmm. extra leverage on top of silver. And then you add in perhaps ex exploration plays on top of right. you know the equity and the silver price and that's like it's a quadruple leverage derivative on right, silver prices. Right. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's it's definitely interesting, interesting. in that way. And, and, and what's, what are some things that you look at then in terms of jurisdiction yeah. or, or management? Is there the some number one thing, thing well, at? number one and number two, the most important things that you look at when analyzing a silver mining company, um, number one would be, you know, management. Um, whether they've done it before, whether they're reputable, because there's a lot of operators in the business right. that that mine unprofitably, they lose money, mm -hmm. and they issue secondaries every year to pay millions of dollars to management. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, we, you know, I've been covering the sector for eight years, so I know which companies do it. Subscribe to Gold Stock Analyst Silver yeah, to and find, find out which ones. <laughs> 
Um, but there's also companies that 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 have performed very well. Uh, their management knows how to operate a good mining business, and they're ethical, and they generate value. That's the main thing. You got to be able to generate value for shareholders. Of course, yeah. A lot of these companies don't do that, and the way you do that is to mine profitably, um, so that you know it can filter through the balance sheet um, into and support the equity price. Mm -hmm. And the other major thing that we look for in uh, miners grade. Grade's probably the most important thing because. And are we seeing that though in these days? You're seeing in terms some of, grade, of it, these like what? Yeah. You know, yeah. There's grade. Yeah. You know, walking around here, there's some projects. You know that they've been pushing the same project for years. They're not moving forward because it's low grade. It's not profitable. But you, there's other companies that you walk around and they are much higher grade. You know, it's going to support a profitable operation. Mm -hmm. And then it just becomes a study in you know an analyst my my economic model of the company versus what the market perceives it to be. Mm -hmm. And when there's a mismatch between the two, um, when my economic model forecast much high is model is much higher than the current price, that's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that's tied into, you know, investor sentiment, right? right? No one really cares about the sector right now. You know, there's there's people here at PDAC, but it's definitely, you know, not sold out, not standing room only. Right. Um, so that leads into, you know, value of the equity. Um, so not a lot of people, the generalist isn't in, the institutions aren't in, so there's not a lot of people pushing stock the, mm -hmm. the miners' stock prices up. So we're able to find some really good values right here. That yeah. Whether the price of gold or silver goes up, they have underlying economic um, fundamentals that are driving value, um, which is, you know, good. You okay, know, so to you drive value, we need that sentiment to improve. Well, right? the, so what yeah, will provide that sentiment yeah, for that renewed interest? In, in the order sector? to drive the, in order for miners to drive value, um, basically the main way you can do it is at the ex, with the exploration uh, bit. You right. know, um, economic studies. You know, you can add yeah. value in economic studies. You can add um, add value in you know the uh, mineralization um, yeah. updates. And, um, and that's how you drive value. So we look for companies that have you know strong fundamentals, high grade um, underlying news activity drive. Mm -hmm. and value. And one other thing regarding uh, gold miner valuation regarding the price of gold, I work with John Duty. John's been covering the miners since 1995. Right, yeah. um, and it's all data driven. It's not opinion or what I think or believe. Mm -hmm. So we use the current price of gold and silver. So we look for miners that are undervalued now on the current price of silver. Because if you use higher price to forecast, then every company is undervalued and then, right, you know. Yeah. So we use the current price. Um, and then I look back, I took all the data from 1995 um, of cash costs for miners. Um, okay. And I generated, so in every issue we generate the average cash cost uh, for the mining industry. So I took that, I took the current price of gold at that time, and I calculated a margin. The average margin for the gold yeah. mining industry since 1995 was this. And I, we have it on a monthly basis. I look back all the way. I took this margin and I plotted it versus the price of um, the HUI index. Right. Okay. And there's a 90% correlation. Right. Like H, the margins go up, HUI goes up. Wow. You know, it's, it's tight. Except in 2015, it broke. Uh, the relationship broke. And so I did a linear regression between the two because it's such a tight correlation. So if you look at that, miners should be valued 50%. Uh, they're 50% undervalued, which means they should be fairly valued 100% higher right. right now based off current fundamentals. Wow. So you have a mining industry that's been cutting back. Uh, their balance sheets are improving. They've got higher margins, and yet they're selling at lower multiples than they did you know, back in 2015. So that's the sort of value that you look for, you know, in a sector, and that's the sort of value that you look for in companies that have uh, strong fundamentals. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a margin of safety. Do you know yeah, what I yeah. mean? Yeah, so that's absolutely. where we're at in the industry. It's you know, it's an opportunity, and that's what we prefer to focus upon rather than you know, gold's going to uh, fifteen hundred, eighteen. Because right. yeah. I, I don't know, yeah. you know. Exactly. But we, you know, <laughs> we can do the analysis well, on companies that value. Them. What's your outlook then for the rest of this year? Are you, know. you know, your market snapshot? Are you bearish, indifferent, yeah. or bullish? Yeah, well, yeah, the GSA silver portfolio, we're up about 26% so far this okay. year. And Excellent. a few of the companies in our portfolio um, have, you know, economic news that are, is going to be driving value over the past few months that we're eagerly waiting for. Okay. So, yeah. you know, like I said, I prefer to focus on that. I hope silver goes up, yeah. you know, the, the supply demand, you know, equation 
favors yeah. it, yeah. Um, you know, and you, you get everything that's going on with the U.S. Federal Reserve. You know, they're not they're yeah. not going to hike rates as much, and it, it's yeah. it's just it's kind of you know mind boggling how the writing is on the wall, and mm -hmm. yet the investor sentiment is so low. So yeah. it, it's you know it's coming. Interesting. So, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Garrett, for yeah. all your time and your in-depth analysis. If you want to find out more about uh, Garrett uh, and the newsletter, uh, please visit goldstockanalyst.com and you can find out more. I'll include his contact information below in the URL. Um, and actually, one more thing. Actually, yeah. You actually do a Gold Stock Analyst Day, right? Yes. Yeah, so when does that happen? And that's for subscribers, of course, right? Yeah, yeah so um, when does that that's happen? That's right before BMO, um, February. We just had it a couple weeks ago. So our top 10, our favorite top 10 gold companies come, and our favorite five silver companies uh, come and present to okay, everyone. Yeah, yeah so, so if you want to find out more information about that and being a subscriber, uh, uh, just please contact Garrett and you can find out more information, okay? Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Garrett. Good. Thank Cheers. you, Sonny. Good. Good. Thanks, man. That was good. Uh, yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. It's good exposure. You know, I'm. A